Hey, how's it going? And welcome back. So it looks like it's Creation Club time again, with so far five shiny new mods for us to have a look at, including Dwarven Mail Armor, Stolen Fur Armor, Expanded Crossbow Pack, Netch Leather Armors, and the mod we're looking at today, which is Dawnfang or Dustfang, which is in some ways two weapons in one. And the quest was created by Skinny Tech Boy. You actually get two unique swords with this mod. Each one is very different and has its own quest. So I've decided to break this down into two short videos rather than not one long one. So make sure you check out part two. It really is worth it. And the mod reads, sealed away in the depths of Rift and Ratways is a dark and terrible secret. And at its heart, a sword of two minds, transformed by the light of the sun and the moon. Dawnfang and Dustfang grant you the power to wield fire and ice and drink the souls of the vanquished. But to do that, you must first free the soul that binds it. And this mod comes at the princess sum of 500 credits, which is five of your American dollars, or around four of Her Majesty's vastly superior pounds. Now, I have to admit that when I downloaded this, I forgot to take note of the price, and I'd like to thank Eisenfaust for coming to my rescue. So a big thanks and a super sloppy kiss rescue me from my shame. Anyway, to get this weapon, you must travel to Riften and enter the Ratway, despite the warnings from the Riften Guard. You will meet and follow ghostly remains who will lead you to an underground vault. But before you can claim the sword, you must fight and defeat the Guardian three times, each time becoming slightly more difficult than the last. There's a lot of interesting lore in this quest, so make sure you read all the notes and journals, and your sympathy has actually made change. Now, once the Guardian has been released, you can claim the sword. Okay, a little back history of this weapon, which was originally found in Morrowind the Shimmering Isles. Dawnfang or Dustfang, we'll just call it Dawnfang for now, was a unique longsword with two distinct variants. Now starting at dawn 6am, the player wields Dawnfang. At night 6pm, it changes into Dustfang. It belonged to Gromach Grow Barrack and was said to be one of the most powerful weapons in that particular game. Romac also said that according to Sindelius Gatharian, the sword was Akavari in origin and created by the Tzaiksi. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, how it was found in an Aelid uh, ruin still remains a mystery to this day. So let's take a look at this weapon and we'll start with the stats now. As usual, Bethesda are a bit sparing with any details and stats and I have a little bit of XP in one hand, not much but a little bit, which will skew the base stats uh, readings. But I do have the Daedric sword from the previous CC mod which has a damage of 17, while Stormfang has a damage of 16. So I'm guessing this is the same as an Ebony Sword, but take that as it is. Um, so based on that, it'll have a damage, base damage of 13 and a weight of 16. It requires the Ebony Ingot for crafting and the Ebony Smithing Perk to upgrade it to Legendary. Hence, I'm reading this as an Ebony Sword. Now, maybe a little bit higher, uh, maybe not. Uh, the really interesting thing here is the enchantment. It in daytime delivers seven points of fire damage, which then changes at dusk to giving seven points of frost damage, and then back again at dawn. But in addition to this, if you kill 12 souls in that period, it additionally absorbs five points of health or magicka. Now this resets when the blade turns each dawn and dusk and has to be redone to get that enchantment back. Now, back in Morrowind, Dawnfang absorbed health and Dustfang absorbed magicka. And I'm kind of guessing it'll be the same for this blade, uh, but I haven't checked that out yet. So, in essence, to get the maximum you can out of this weapon, you have to go on a murderous Groundhog Day kind of existence, which leads me to believe Tamriel will be pretty empty after a few months. So, stats aside, what do I think of this weapon? Well, I'll be honest, when I saw the sneak peek images, I really didn't think I'd like this. But I do. Despite these kind of weapons not being my thing, this really works for me. And I can see myself actually using this weapon for several different character types. I think it's a, a really great piece of work by the mod author. Great textures and overall look. The enchantment is really interesting and especially for people role-playing as a murderous psychopath. The quest was actually a lot of fun, and uh, so I surprised myself, and I will give this mod definitely a thumbs up, and I'll probably, as I said before, be using it myself in-game. I can't say much better than that, can I? Anyway, 
It's not my opinion that matters, I just hope I've given you enough info to make up your own mind whether this mod is worth it to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you later.